Skin tumors in our pets, they are so, so common. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you five new remedies. It's actually even more, I think it's eight, that you can be using to treat your dog or cat's skin tumors at home now. And you should really stick around to the end because I'm gonna be showing you how to make a brand new skin tumor home remedy paste. Click the link to subscribe to Veterinary Secrets. Our dogs and cats, they can get a number of different skin tumors. Fortunately, most of those are benign. There are a number of different skin tumors in dogs. There are mast cell tumors, there are histiocytomas, there are lipomas, etc. But for today's video, I'm gonna be focusing on mast cell tumors in dogs. It's the most common skin tumor affecting our dogs, accounting for seven to 21% of all skin tumors. But the remedies I'm gonna be discussing, these are applicable to all skin cancers. Mast cells are a key part of your dog or your cat's immune system. Their primary role is to ward off foreign invaders, i.e. think parasites. For example, what would happen is your dog has some type of internal parasite. That parasite has a type of protein called an antigen. That antigen, it binds onto the surface of the mast cell. The mast cell can then recognize, oh, we've got a foreign invader here. It releases all these serious toxic chemicals to kill that parasite. The mast cell now, they play a key role in allergy. We can have pollen, for instance, which can cause Ig antibodies to bind to the mast cells, releasing things such as histamine. Histamine, that can produce all this itching, redness, swelling, all that scratching that we're seeing in a dog with allergies. So knowing all that, you can see how a mast cell tumor potentially could be pretty serious. You can have this local growth, you can have these mast cells releasing their toxic chemicals, you can have all the secondary signs of an allergy, itching, scratching, localized swelling. The most common clinical sign you're gonna see in an animal with a mast cell tumor, they're gonna have a red raise, often ulcerated lump or bump, that's gonna be fairly irritated. Here are some images of some animals with mast cell tumors. There are six breeds that have four to eight times the incidence of mast cell tumors compared to other dogs. This includes the Pug, the Boston Terrier, the Ridgebacks, Boxers, Pipple Terrier and Weimaraner. Mast cell tumors, they're generally graded grade one where there's local growth, little chance for it to spread elsewhere. Grade two, it is growing locally, it may spread elsewhere, then grade three, where there's a high chance to spread elsewhere in the body. Many grade one local tumors, those can be monitored, those can be treated with oral and topical medications. But when we're dealing with the more serious tumors, then you're looking at ideally having surgery. You wanna remove that mass. First, the anti-inflammatories, antihistamines. Two natural products, nettle, the bioflavonoid quercetin, and the OTC antihistamine, cetirizine. Regardless of the type of skin tumor, you wanna be giving some type of anti-inflammatory. And if you're dealing with a mast cell tumor in particular, you wanna be giving an antihistamine. You wanna counteract the release of some of the chemicals coming from the mast cells, such as histamine. Nettle is a great natural antihistamine. This is the nettle tea. A typical dose, 100 milligrams per 10 pounds twice daily of the extract, and or you just make the nettle tea. The standard amount would be one cup of nettle tea for 50 pounds of body weight daily. Kerosidin, it's a really important natural anti-inflammatory and it also has some great antihistamine qualities. Really ideal for an animal with a mast cell tumor. Of our whole plant extract kerosidin supplement, I would suggest 50 milligrams for 25 pounds of body weight daily. Then you could also consider a conventional antihistamine. I really like cetirizine. It only has to be given once a day. The typical dog dose is one mg per kilo. So a little 20 pound dog, 22 pound dog Tula, she's 10 kilos. She'd be getting 10 milligrams once a day. Number two, the corticosteroids, both natural and conventional. Licorice root extract, which is considered the natural steroid, and then the OTC 1% hydrocortisone. Corticosteroids seem to be directly toxic to mast cells, and many of the tumors that respond to the steroids. Licorice root extract, it's considered the natural corticosteroid. It has many of the same properties that the corticosteroid drugs have. So we're finding it to be really effective for many of our dogs that have allergies. It's been extensively studied, widely used in Chinese medicine, shown to have an array of different anti-tumor properties. A standard dog dose of the licorice root extract would be a half a mil of the tincture per 20 pounds of body weight twice daily. You wanna be giving this for a maximum of 14 days in a row. And then you can have the over-the-counter 1% hydrocortisone as the conventional option. I'd be applying that on topically over top of that tumor, i.e. the mast cell tumor. I'd be doing that a minimum of twice a day. At least do that for two weeks and then assess, is it being beneficial or not? When we had animals in the clinic that had some of the more advanced mast cell tumors, you know, grade two, grade three, and we had clients who were not able to afford or wanted to consider chemotherapy, 
Now, oral steroids often seem to put these guys into a remission. Number three. The medicinal ingredients found in the cannabis plant, this is our whole plant extract CBD supplement. Many of the medicinal ingredients within a cannabis plant have been specifically studied for skin tumors, and some people are seeing some good results using some of the cannabinoids. Other thing I really like about them, you can also use them orally as well as topically. A standard oral dog dose for a dog with a mast cell tumor, three milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight, I'd be doing that twice daily. Then also be putting that CBD product, the cannabinoid, topically over top of that tumor. Doing that somewhere between two to four times a day. Number four. This is the medicinal mushroom turkey tail, also called Coriolis. Turkey tail extract is one of the family of medicinal mushrooms, which is probably the most important one we're considering cancer in our dogs and cats. In fact, it's so important that within Japan, it's now classified as a medicinal treatment for cancer in people, specifically colon cancer. The turkey tail is found to make the immune system much more effective. A typical pet dose, 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. These capsules, these are 500 milligram capsules here. So if it's gonna treat Tula, I would just break open the capsule, give her half a capsule once a day. Number five, this is our anti-cancer paste. The first part, it includes the medicinal mushroom chaga. It's considered the most potent antioxidant that we have today. It's been widely studied for immune support and particularly for cancer. Next, we have the healing oil castor oil. It is a great topical anti-inflammatory and it's also being used for lumps and bumps in our pets. Lastly, the medicinal oil from Asia, this is the neem oil. Neem is primarily used in veterinary medicine for its insecticidal properties but it's got some great skin support properties and in particular, anti-cancer properties. To start, we're taking one tablespoon of the chaga, then add in 60 mils or a quarter teaspoon of boiling water. I'm gonna mix it, let that sit and steep for about 20 minutes. Transfer that chaga powder blend to a bowl. One teaspoon of the castor oil. Last but not least, one teaspoon of the neem oil. Mix your paste well. As you can see here, it's blending really well because I was able to get a ground fine chaga powder. The chaga powder here. Our paste here, it's still a little bit soft. Why not just sit over top of the tumor? I'm gonna be adding more chaga powder to thicken it up. Let's add in another teaspoon of powder. See if that thickens it up. One more teaspoon of chaga. It's just wet enough we can Put it on as a paste, but not too wet. It's gonna fall off. Perfect. Okay, look how good that looks. Apply this poultice directly over top of that tumor. Imagine Tula has it on the front of her leg. It's nice and thick. Look at that, fully covering that mast cell tumor. Then when you get yourself something like this sticky bandage of this vet wrap, wrap that over top of that tumor in your chaga poultice. Leave this on overnight for at least eight to 12 hours and then change it again. You have more than enough paste here for two weeks. You want to keep it in the fridge. So twice a day, you're applying the poultice, applying the vet wrap, leaving that over top of your dog. I would suggest do this for a full two weeks and then you can assess like whether this is being beneficial or not, actually helping your dog with that skin tumor. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets on how you can help your pet with skin tumors. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.